Hey guys and gals, Vlad here with AVT Astro, and today, as always, I've got an interesting Astro topic for you guys. For those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little Astro blog called avt-astro.com, and of course, this YouTube channel. So if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Over the years, I've had the privilege of owning over 100 scopes, more accessories than I could count. And that's what brings us to this topic. I've got another scope and mount behind me. All right, as you can see, behind me, the Celestron Edge HD 11 inch and the Celestron CGXL mount. Um, this is one of their higher end uh, GM type of setups. Uh, so I had the opportunity, you know, to kind of, you know, use this visual actually primarily. Uh, so I did not do any astrophotography. I wanted to give you guys my thoughts just, you know, kind of quickly on what I thought about this whole setup from a visual perspective. Um, and also, you know, kind of give you an overview of some of the accessories you might consider for both the Edge HD, you know, OTA, if you have that with whatever mount. Uh, and with the uh, with the dismount, you know, if you have it, you know, like what kind of stuff should you, you know, kind of be considering maybe. Alrighty, guys. So here's the setup going on over here. Um, so what do I, you know, what do I think about the overall scope and, you know, mount combo? The mount itself, it's got a 75 pound capacity. It is belt driven. Um, you know, this is Celestron's uh, top of the line mount, you know, currently at the making of this video. A um, couple of things, you know, I'll kind of start with the mount. I absolutely love that they have a handle here on it and a handle here because this mount is not light. Makes it really easy to carry. So that's one of the things I really, really enjoy about this mount. It does have that. Overall, I mean, this thing is totally beefy, man. Like, I mean, th th this thing is a beast. It's got a 75 pound capacity. It handles the uh, 11 inch OTA with ease. Uh, the other thing that I do like is that it does have four auxiliary ports, so you don't really have to get auxiliary port splitters. Um, it's got two auto guided ports, so port wise, this thing's pretty, you know, pretty lock, rock solid, so I do like that. Um, adjusting for like uh, polar alignment on this is pretty nice as well. Again, I didn't really use it for astrophotography, so I'm not gonna, you know, you know, kind of get too much into that. Uh, but I did, you know, I, I kind of messed around with it. It's very easy to do, so I do like that. Overall, build quality in this is really nice. Uh, the finish on this is really nice. Um, you know, one thing that I will say is that, you know, my primary mounts that I use, right, are the G11. So that's, you know, that's this guy here. Um, so if you kind of look at this mount, right, it's totally machined out of aluminum right it's not cast like the cg xl now there's nothing wrong with casting it's just that like this doesn't feel as premium i guess you know the other thing that's you know you know just kind of kind of keeping you know stuff in mind if you're planning on running on these for a while um i don't know how long you know celestron is going to be making the electronic you know components for this to support this mount all right, one other thing that's, you know, I, like I said, this mount is belt driven. One other thing that I kind of, you know, found really interesting is that even though it's belt driven, which typically means that, you know, it should be a quieter mount, uh, this mount actually has pretty loud motors. So take a listen. Um, so those are kind of a couple of things to keep in mind. Now kind of moving back to the really positives with this thing. This mount has by far the best go-to accuracy I've ever seen of any mount. I mean, even at high power with this, you know, OTA that has a 28 fo uh, 2800 millimeter focal length. I mean, this thing, you know, point in accuracy, it'd be in the field of view with this thing from slowing, for, uh, with slowing from one part of the sky to the next. So, I mean, pretty darn amazing. I mean, certainly much better than what, you know, what I get with my normal, you know, less money mounts that I typically use. All right, so anyway, so I, you know, I kind of won't dwell too much on the mount. Uh, the mount I like, it works great. Um, it's, you know, it's pretty heavy. This thing is not light. The tripod is a total beast if you get, if you get this heavy duty. Uh, version of the tripod so it's not a light mount 75 pound capacity that will handle up to the c14 ota very easily uh so anyway, yeah the mount is great i do like it all right let's move on to the ota what do i think about the edge hd 
Um, I've already got reviews of the 8 inch version of this on my blog. Much of you know what I said about it before holds true. Just a quick summary. Very sharp optics on these. Uh, the 8 inches that I had had like zero uh, mirror flop. Basically, it's you know the tilt in the mirror on these. The 11 inch has a little bit more. It's not terrible. I mean, you know, the, but there there is a little bit more. It does have mirror lock. So if you're into astrophotography, AA, you're good to go there. Uh, focuser on these. That stock is very smooth. Never had an issue with that. It does have the new XLT coatings, of course. Um, they make a 0.7 reducer here to where, you know, for astrophotography or EAA, you could do that. Or these are uh, faster compatible, so you could do the uh, Hyperstar at F2 very easily. Um, just, you know, real quickly, I've always liked the Edge HTs. They are great, great scopes, both uh, for visual and for EAA, which if you're not familiar with EAA, what EAA is, kind of like astrophotography, except it's for lazy people like me. <laughs> All right, guys, so anyway, so that kind of concludes the mini review of, you know, like this setup, just in general, what I think about it. I really enjoyed using it. Um, again, I only use it for visual use, not really sure how it works for astrophotography. Um, although, you know, capacity-wise, it's not super beefy, so it should work really well for that as well. Um, I will have a kind of more in-depth review on my, uh, posted on my blog, so, you know, check that out. But anyway, let's check out some of the accessories that you might want to give if you have just the OTA or maybe this, you know, whole setup or maybe just the mount, um, you know, what you should be considering for these or what you might actually need for this. All right, so, the very first thing that you absolutely must have for an SCT if you live in any climate that has, you know, any type of moisture is a dew shield on these guys right here. Uh, they're super cheap. I mean, they're usually like under 50 bucks. Uh, you know, it's made out of flexible plastic. Uh, it actually kind of serves a couple of purposes. So if you're not familiar, dude, it's kind of like, you know, the best explanation that I've heard about. It's kind of like rain that you can't see that falls from the top. So if you think about it, if your corrector is pointing kind of like this and there's rain falling on it that you can't see, well, it's going to do over really quickly, right? That's what the dew shield helps with because that way, you know, when it's falling, it kind of falls on here and it keeps your corrector nice and dry for longer. So that's the primary thing. Now, let's say you live in a climate that's dry and you're like, you know, I really don't care. You know, I guess I don't need a dew shield. Uh, unless there's totally no light around, you still do because this also kind of serves to prevent light from, you know, getting into your corrector and rolling in your contrast and that type of deal, whether you're doing visual or astrophotography. So considering how inexpensive it is, it's a must have accessory. Uh, we'll kind of, you know, keep on the tube here. Um, so these guys, they come uh, with the 50 millimeter straight through finder, right? To where, you know, you kind of look at that, uh, through it directly. Finder wise, um, you may or might not want to upgrade, you know, it kind of depends. If you're doing astrophotography, you, you probably definitely don't because you're probably never going to use a finder, especially if you have the next accessory we're talking about. Um, if you do visual, really nice to have one of these right angle finders because this is kind of like almost like a wide field scope, you know, that you could look at really wide field stuff with. So right angle finder or you could do a red dot. I'll post in links for both. Um, next up, we've got the star sense. So, I've actually, you know, I've done reviews on the Star Sun. So if you know, if you want to kind of more like a in-depth review, check out my content, and I've got a review of this thing. Um, overall, a really cool accessory. So they'll align them out for you automatically. Um, is it a must-have? No, not really. I mean, considering how pricey it is, you, you know, I wouldn't say it's a must-have at all. Uh, so this OTA does come with the two-inch diagonal. Um, the stock one that it comes with isn't bad. I'll post in the link of a better diagonal though. I, I kind of don't really like these SCT versions because that way it's kind of hard, harder to change position, especially with heavier eyepiece of where, you know, the diagonal is kind of pointing. So I kind of don't really like that. I prefer a visual back and a regular two inch diagonal that you could then use in any of your scopes too. All right. <laughs> For those of you that have watched my channel, you guys know I love the batter zoom. So if you don't have any good eyepieces, this is the first one I recommend. Again, I have a video on this. Love, love, love this eyepiece. Um, get one. All right. So uh, kind of moving on down to the mount, right? So, you know, I already talked about the star sense. So the remote controller is kind of different with that. 
Uh, what else, you know, could you consider? So Celeste trying to make this GPS unit for their amount. So that's kind of a nice, you know, thing to have so you don't have to put in the, the date and the time. So that's really cool. Uh, let's see, moving around. Am I missing anything on the mount? No, we are good to go. All right. So you're obviously going to need battery uh, power or, you know, like plug it into AC or DC in your car or like in your house. Uh, Celestron actually makes their own batteries. I'll have a review actually of this, you know, full battery, but this is actually a really good option. I'll also have a link to it uh, in, uh, in the description here. It's got a, a, like a cigarette lighter adapter and then it's got USBs and stuff like that over here. Actually, I mean, this thing will last for a long time, you know, powering something like this. So that's really cool. Uh, Red flashlight, you know, if you're new to astronomy, which, you know, this isn't really an inch level scope, so you probably already have one of these, but if you don't, you definitely need one of those. Um, these guys right here, you know, um, I've, I've done this review with the Nexstar uh, 8SE, like an ultimate accessory guide, and I forgot to mention these uh, vibration suspension pads. Uh, these can actually, you know, work pretty well, especially if you're on a hard, hard surface, or if you're on concrete like this, or asphalt. They actually do, you know, basically you put them under the feet is the way that they work. I just don't want to put them, you know, under so you can kind of show you. But they kind of have this soft jelly type of material. And that really helps to um, dampen vibrations. You know, with this now, if you have this heavy duty tripod, I don't think these are really necessary. But if you have this mount with the light duty tripod, then yeah, I think, you know, you'd probably benefit from one of the, from some of these especially if you're on a hard surface um, and you've got a heavier scope going on. All right, and then last but not least, the chair that I was sitting on, it's not just some kind of weirdo chair, right? <laughs> this thing is, you know, totally height adjustable. So some kind of height adjustable chair, if you are actually, you know, doing visual, is a total must have. I really, really like these, really, really recommend them. All right, guys, so hopefully you guys found this overview of the equipment, you know, pretty interesting. Um, also, you know, hopefully kind of get a sense for what accessories you might consider getting, you know, um, you know, if you kind of have this whole setup or, you know, one piece of it. So I know if you guys have any questions, comments or anything like that, leave them in the thing below. If you're not subscribed again, please do consider subscribing. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.